Hello friends, I am Colonel Daljeet Singh Chima. I am a professor of practice at Shulani University, Solon. Today I want to share with you certain unique aspects of personality of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikh faith. We all know Guru Nanak as a religious teacher of Sikhs. But I think it is unfair to call him only a religious teacher because he was much more than that. He was a great social reformer and a, a, you know, a, a spiritual leader par excellence. Today, the need for his message, message of love, compassion, peace, universal brotherhood, oneness of God is much more than the need for food or hunger of any kind. So I thought it is a good idea to share what he stood for, what did he do to improve the society. When Guru Nanak came on the scene uh, in 15th century, 1469, as a matter of fact, that time the social and political scene in India was perhaps exactly the same what it is today. Society divided on caste and religion. Hindus and Muslims did not see eye to eye with each other. Muslims, rich Muslims, upper class Muslims, as well as upper class Hindus, they tortured their, the uh, lower strata of society. The poor suffered a lot and people were so unhappy. Uh, and, and that is the time uh, in that kind of operating environment, Guru Nanak came on the scene. Guru Nanak had a vision to change the society. He felt that there was a need to improve the society, the kind of misgivings and the kind of superstitions which were being followed and the division on the basis of caste and religion. He wanted to change the society. He was a sagacious philosopher. He was a man of compassion. And of course, he was a man who had the will to change the uh, society for the better. That is why he walked the talk and he actually traveled 40 to 50,000 miles in all four directions. The six call them the four Udasis. He went in one direction for years. He spent time there, talked to the people, tried to change the people, came back to Sultanpur, his hometown where his parents lived and his wife lived along with two children. And then again, after staying for some time, he moved in another direction. He went to Tibet, he went to Iraq, he went to Sri Lanka, he went to all kinds of places to Mecca and Medina to spread the message of uh, oneness of God. As a matter of fact, when he came to the world in, uh, in uh, 1469 or 15th century, uh, that is the time when he wanted to create a bridge between the Muslims and Hindus. And out of that bridge which he created, Sikhism was born. Sikhism was born. The Sikh word really means uh, a shisha or a learner. As a matter of fact, every human being is a learner till the last day of his or her life. But Sikh is and Sikhs have learned a lot from history and from their gurus and the final guru, Guru Granth Sahib. We learn a lot and take guidance and advice from our uh, living guru, Guru Granth Sahib. Now, another aspect which must be understood is that Guru Nanak was a great social reformer and he believed in social and gender equality. Social equality, he believed and loved the lowest of the low. At one place in Guru Granth Sahib, actually he talks about Nicha under Nich, Jat, Nicho Hui, Nich. Nanak needs ke sangsat vadyosokaris. What it means is that I am with the lowest of the low. What have I got to do with the rich and the famous and those people who are 
comfortable in their position. I am there with the downtrodden and the people who are suffering. He also talked about uh, that there is only one father and we all, the entire humanity belongs to, uh, you know, they, we are the children and he is the father, one. He also believed in na koi Hindu, na koi Musliman. That is when he was enlightened, when he came out of the Bay River where he had vanished for three days. When he came out, the first two things which he said was, na ko Hindu, na koi Musliman. Guru Nanak was a poet of exceptional sensibilities. His way or his method of spreading the message was through the poetry and music which he made a creed of worship. His ideas were so simple and he wanted to spread those simple methods to the common man, to the peasants and laborers and other people so that they understand and they change themselves. The poetry, one of the finest poetries uh, is Japji Sahab which comes in the beginning, which is written in the beginning of Guru Granth Sahib and is the first Bani uh, of Nitnam, every day's prayer of any Sikh. Similarly, the other one is Arti, also considered one of the greatest compositions of Guru Nanak, which he spoke at uh, Jagannath Puri in Odisha when he went there. He observed the Arti of Lord Krishna being performed and spontaneously he came out with this Arti, which is considered one of the best compositions. It is believed that uh, actor Balraj Sani, he went to Gurudev, uh, Rabindranath Thakur, and requested him to write a, a, an international anthem. He said, you written a national anthem, why don't you write an international anthem? Gurudev Tagore said that there is no need to do that. The Guru Nanak in 16th century has not only a, written not only a international anthem but a universal anthem. He was so enamored with this Arti that he translated it into uh, Bengali and it is available there in that language too. So he was a poet of exceptional sensibilities and used his poetry to spread the message of oneness of God, universal brotherhood and equality for all. Guru Nanak used methods of different methods to spread the message. Of course, he was a man of scientific temper. So he talked about the eclipse, how eclipse is caused. Then he talked about Akasa Agas, Lak Patala Patal. He talked about lakhs of planets being there at that time and lakhs of Netherland, uh, Netherworlds being there. So he talked about that at that time, which no one uh, believed. That was the time when it was believed that the earth is being held by a, a bull on, on, on one of the horns. So that is the kind of uh, misgivings were there among the people. That is when he talked about that there are lakhs and lakhs of planets. How could a bull be keeping them uh, on, on his horns? So he tried to take away those misgivings from the society. His compassion and love for humanity was absolutely unique. Uh, it is seen and it is visible, the sign of his pain and anguish in Baburwani. Babur, as the emperor of uh, India at that time, he let loose terror and horror and he attacked Lahore. During that period, Guru Nanak himself was also arrested and made captive. When he realized what was happening and hundreds of people are being killed mercilessly, he had a dialogue with one of his disciples called Lalo and he says, Poon ke soile gawe nanak kangu gawe lalo. Now he was talking about, let us sing the song of murder. 
because there is so much of murder and bloodshed being uh, there after having seen that. So he was a man who was moved by the by by any kind of torture or any uh, these kind of uh, th you know with the uh, ordinary people and. Uh, one more aspect of his personality was that he believed in gender equality, women empowerment, women empowerment. At that time, when women were considered just slaves to men and nobody could think of equating women with men, at that time he said, uh, that, that is the time when he said, Sokyo manda akhye jit jame rajan. Why revile or say bad things? Like, condemn a person who gives birth even to the kings. So that was his way of equating and giving the message. Later on, the other gurus followed in his footsteps and all the gurus started giving due respect and dignity to the women folk. Uh, his belief in laws of nature was unique and great. He believed in protection of environment. At that time, perhaps talking of protection of environment was not heard of because maybe there was no need of protecting the environment. But Guru believed that unless you look after the environment in which uh, you, know, you live, you cannot progress. That is why he talked about Paman Guru, Pani Pita, Mata, Tarta Mahat. Paman Air is the Guru, Pani, water is the father, and Tarat, earth is the mother, dear mother. So, Paman Guru, Pani Pita, Mata Tarat Mahat was the concept which he gave at that time. Uh, he also believed in merit. It is well known that Guru Nanak had two sons, Pai Lakmi Chand and Pai Sri Chand. He did not give the Gurgadi or made guru uh, either of his sons because he thought they did not deserve it. And by doing so, and he gave it to another follower, disciple who uh, served him so well and whom he thought could carry forward his message. That was Pailana or Guru Angadev Ji, later on the second guru of six. He gave it to him and not, to, and this made such a powerful statement this kind of action that it was understood that merit was the most important thing uh, to have uh, in Sikhism. Sikhism also believes and is known, I believe, all over the world is because of langar and seva. The pratha or tradition of langar stems from Guru Nanak's early days when people used to come and seek his advice and because the means of communication were such that they who, the people who came to him could not go back to their villages or their destinations, they had to stay there with him for the night. And that is how Guru Nanak started with feeding those people who had come to meet him. This tradition or pratha is now made such a great impact not only in India and in Gurdwaras, as a matter of fact, in the entire world, that any Gurdwara anywhere in the world has a langar going on uh, throughout the day and night. The concept of langar is that people are equal, they sit together at the same place, at the same level, and they are served the same faith, same, same food, whatever uh, is being served to one, will be served to the other and is the same langar is cooked for each and every person. He may be high, low or whatever, caste or religion, there is no distinction. So that is equality which Sikh faith believes in. The other is seva. Wherever there is a problem, anywhere in the world, whether it is a war or there is a tsunami or there is an earthquake, any natural disaster or man-made disaster, the first people to reach there are the Sikhs. Sikhs believe that uh, serving the God is through serving the human beings. 
those who are in need. So Sikh way of life is sharing and caring. Sharing and caring is the Sikh way of life. So the another thing is three basic tenets of Sikhism are Kirt Karna, Vand Chapna or Naam Japna. Kirt Karna is work is worship. That anyone who does his or her job properly with professional integrity and with total de dedication, doing one's job to the best of one's ability is the real religion. Lord Krishna also talks about that in Gita, that work is worship. The other is the one chakna. One chakna is sharing with others who needs are more than yours. In Sikh faith, the swans are one-tenth of your hard-earned money or legitimate earning should go towards the people who need it. So it is an accepted thing that in sect families even today part of their earning goes to the Gurdwara or donation towards Langar or for any other kind of seva. Nowadays people talk about the, even the medical Langar, medicine Langar, any kind of thing which is given to the people free to help them, those who are in need. They are the ones, six are there in the forefront. Uh, six also believe it is their way of life is Chardikala and Sarbatdapala. Chardikala is that remaining in high spirits. Six are advised, are told by the gurus that they must remain always in high spirits. And Sarbadda Pala is that well-being of all. Thinking positive, thinking good and thinking well-being of all the humanity is also a part of uh, Sikh's way of life. So I think uh, today we need the teachings of Guru Nanak to reach maximum number of people all over so that the society today which is a strife tone and divided on the basis of religion and caste and rich and poor etc must get benefited from it. Sat Shri Akal.